Did you decorate this year in your home? Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I waited until New Year's, actually January 2nd. Okay. And I put away the tree and, and all that. But Very cool. I I'm think... pretty lazy when it comes to, to cleaning up after the holidays. Yeah, it always goes by, like cl- the cleanup for me goes so fast. The setup mm-hmm. takes forever. But I think we waited till after the New Year's. It was probably like that weekend after or something. And we finally took stuff down. And I got so sad. I was like, oh. Yeah. I love Christmas. Is that your favorite holiday is Christmas? It <laughs> is. We decorated. This is going to sound crazy, but we decorated our, our home the day after Halloween. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> I was there. I was like, I, it brings me joy. Like, who says I have to wait? <laughs> right. <laughs> If it brings you joy, it's the holiday season. It's, you know, not specific. It's timing. So, yes. Yeah. I agree. Three, Three, two, two, one. one. Welcome back to another episode of Shit That Goes On In Our Heads. I'm Dirty Skittles. And I'm G-Rex. I'm G-Rex. Oh, my bad. You're bad. Let's do it again. One last time. Okay. One last time. We got this. Ready? Three, two, two one. one. Welcome back to another episode of Shit That Goes On In Our Heads. I'm G-Rex. I'm Dirty Skittles. I- <laughs> <laughs> now we're keeping this because it's beautiful and authentic. Okay. <laughs> And we are joined today by our guest. Do you want to give a little intro? Heather. So excited. Hi. Heather, I have to start off by telling you something that I was like, I have to tell her. I have to tell her. So I got COVID. Long story short, I was in quarantine. And every, like, I mean, I felt like shit like the first couple of days. And the only thing that made me feel better was like no matter how bad I felt I was like I'm gonna take a hot shower and I'm gonna do my skincare Um, and I use your products and it literally was like okay I feel so much better I can go lay down and be like moisturized and clean and just felt great so I had to tell you thank you that's so wonderful yeah don't make me cry right now (laughs) (laughs) it was like it was it it was more than like obviously just good skincare right like it was comforting like I was like oh Mm. Like I, it felt good to take care of myself in that way. And I've been using it since it came in. And I tried to get my husband to use it. I'm like, just put this on a little. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was like, I got to tell her. Yeah. I, oh, thank you so much. I love the body butter. Love. Because, you know, winter up, you know, up north here in upstate New York, it's brutal on us. And so I, I have it lathered on. I'm like, yeah. heaven. Fucking heaven. Good thing. It helps. I'm so glad it's working for you. Yeah, it's really good stuff. And I thought like when it first came in, I'm like, oh man, I hope I like it because if I don't like it, what am I going to do? But like, I literally love it. Like I'm not even, <laughs> I'm not even saying that like just to be nice. Like I actually really love it. So it kind of drives into our first topic, which is for those that are listening, Heather does have a skincare line. I highly recommend. Highly. It's gentle. It did not strip my skin. Like I have sensitive skin on my face. So it's been really great. How did you get into that, Heather? Wow. Well, gosh, as a kid, as a little girl, I loved anything, beauty, skincare. I would take avocados and mash them up and, you know, make my mom put it on her face and go make mask. And so I, after it was in between college, I went to cosmetology school and just went from there. After I was done with cosmetology school, I did get into makeup artistry for many years and working for lines such as Clinique and Estee Lauder. And I worked for Clarins and I loved it, but it really wasn't... It was retail. It was your working holidays and you're standing all day and it wasn't my thing. So then on, I left retail and started a career in HR management, which is absolutely, completely 360, totally not even in the realm of beauty. But I excelled in that. And I was in that career for 12 years. And yet it just wasn't enough. It wasn't me. Mm. So I left my career in 2013. 
and went back to school and studied cosmetic chemistry and formulation and natural formulation and started creating just batches of skincare. And it took several years, but in 2017, Heather Grace Skincare was born. Yes. We love it. Love. Yeah. I mean, how was that like... Were you scared to to step away from that HR world and try? Because I'm imagining it was a passion throughout, even though Mm -hmm. you went to that side of the career and then kind of coming back. Was it scary? So scary not knowing, you know, how I'm going to support myself, not taking a paycheck, not having an actual paycheck every two weeks is, I mean, it was terrifying to me. I luckily had support from my family and friends. And I just persevered. I just went for it. I cried a ton Mm -hmm. and wanted to pull my hair out. (laughs) And But I've also had a lot of fun. And it's just something that I am so passionate about. So I I can't quit. It's just... It's ingrained in me now. Yeah. 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 Just hearing you talk about the... Not having the steady income in the beginning. Like, oh, that makes me nervous. Like, I can't imagine... (laughs) taking the plunge but like also how rewarding right to like do something you're passionate about and have such a great outcome like yeah that's awesome thank you and it's been a challenge because I didn't have investors or a, a lot of upfront working capital so it's basically it's I've put everything in what I've made and I just continue to do that and continue to work on advertising and marketing and because everybody that tries it actually does love the product. And it's like you said, you yeah. guys love it. It's a good product. So I'm just putting myself out there as much as I can. And it's fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. What's the biggest lesson you've learned so far, like with having your own business? Oh boy. Being flexible, learning how to roll with the tides, because one day you are just, you are ready to go. You think, you know, you're getting there and then you get knocked down. It's so just rolling with the tides and learning that not to take myself too seriously and listening to others advice as well. Yeah. 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 Do you think that your career like an HR helped you kind of deal with some of that though? Because, you know, we all know human resources is not the funnest job in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I truly believe that it helped me. It helped me see ins and outs of businesses. So it helped me form my ethics and it helped me realize, you know, what it takes to have a business. But I also come from a long line of entrepreneurs. My dad's an entrepreneur and one and my sisters are entrepreneurs. So I, I definitely have that kind of ingrained in me. Yeah. Are you comfortable talking about personal life apart from business? I'm curious, like mental health wise, right? Mm -hmm. This is just me selfishly asking you because like I've always kind of toyed around with doing what I call my passion project, but I'm a person that is incredibly anxious. I am afraid to fail and that fear will literally cripple me to not do anything, which I know is not good. I get it. I know my therapist, what she would say right now. But in that, is there, can you relate to that at all? Like if for me, if my personal life is not going well, then I can't excel anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Were did you have any struggles on the personal life front? My struggles actually, you know, started when I was a kid. Kids are can be cruel, and me having lots of freckles, I was made fun of a lot for my skin, and it, I would cry. I was also ex- I'm so extremely sensitive. I am very empathetic, and to the point where. I remember one time kids were stepping on ants on purpose at school and I started crying because I was sad that they were killing ants Yeah. At so I've always been just very sensitive. And so I would cry, then I would be made fun of crying. So, you know, it just, it, it was like a an internal battle of dealing with my own insecurities and depression because that runs in my family. And so, yeah, I, that's where I really struggled. By the time I got to junior high, I started wearing a ton of makeup to cover up my freckles mm. and thinking that would, you know, help and lessen teasing. And it actually kind of made it worse in some ways because then I was made fun of for wearing too much makeup. So, and I've always battled with depression. It's just something that I have on both my mom and my dad's side. 
So I've had to learn to self love. I've had to learn to love myself and to understand that it's okay if you're not feeling happy all the time because nobody is happy mm. all the time, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure if I completely answered your question. Yeah. I sort of went all the way around. Yeah, but. no, I think that's actually interesting because your passion essentially was part of something you were battling with. I mean, like, I think when I think of like skincare and self-love and stuff like those kind of correlate, like if I'm, like I mentioned, I was sick, I wasn't feeling well, but being able to set aside time to take care of myself in that way, I associate it with my appearance and my skin and stuff. So I just think that's interesting how the two kind of correlate, like the teasing on freckles, but there's something there that was able to bring a passion towards skincare and kind of make up and that all aligning is very interesting to me like, I'm like yeah, oh. thank you yes yeah. it, it, like I said it was always something that I thought about when I was a little kid and I had to grow up and didn't think that you know following my dream was viable for me when it's come full circle so it really is and yeah. it what I want to with my business it's not just skincare what I want to help other women and men is to feel good in their own skin because you can use all the skincare in the world to try and make yourself feel better. But if you are not looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing beauty there, then that's inside. Also, just really help food, what you eat, what you drink really does help your skin on the outside as well. Yeah. It really from within. When did that change for you? Like when were you able to look at yourself and embrace your freckles? I was in my early 20s. I think that's when I started reading some self-help books. And I think once you're in your mid-20s, your brain sort of is more developed. Mm -hmm. And I was able to handle some of the depression a little bit better and exercise. And I just kind of came into my own more. And that's not to say I don't battle with depression now. There's been bouts where it's just been... I have no idea. It's like my a chemical in my, it just, mm-hmm. the serotonin, I, it just depletes. Yeah. And so it still happens from time to time. But in my 20s is when I started coming into myself and, and learning that I am a good person. And to take care of myself, I know that I feel a lot better on the inside. So, and it shows on the outside. Yeah. So what do you do today to kind of get out of your head when you're, when you mm. get into those like depression, d- depressive states? Mm -hmm. So I started back in April. I've always been pretty active. But back in April, I started a training program. My trainer's in London. So it's all online. And I do a lot of weightlifting. So I work out about four to five days a week. And that is... I mean, it's a life-changing experience when you can really get into the gym or get outside. But whatever it is, it is exercise. That's what helped me keeps me level yeah keeps you level because you're you know you're only focusing on that one thing right it actually makes your brain stop long enough so that like you don't drop a weight on your foot or you don't fall off the treadmill yeah i believe me i get it (laughs) yes yes you do have to concentrate that's for sure especially if you're starting to do heavier weight so that is one the other is i meditate every single day Every morning, I have an app that I use and I meditate every day and set my intention for every single day. And I also write in a manifestation planner every day. So I'm keeping myself on track by doing these healthy habits that, you know, won't set me into a depression or won't, you know, get me off track from reaching my goal. Yeah. You're taking care of the inside and the outside. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. I, for me, once I first got out of therapy, I just remember, I don't even, I still don't even really know how to like verbalize it, but I remember finally feeling like I could go to the gym and like, oh, I can actually stick to this and like, you know, make this a part of my, of just taking care of myself. And I think before that and being depressed and battling with all the stuff that I was battling, your my mental health and my physical health co- they co align right so like if i was feeling like shit inside i was treating my body like shit on the outside so i remember that being a turning point for me where i was like wow i could do this now 
and it's not a chore and it's something that does help, you know? It's amazing how everything's all connected. Our skin, our brains, our skin's our lar- largest organ. I always go back to the skincare part, but our skin is our largest organ. And so we need to feed that. And everything's connected. Your gut, all your organs, your brain, there is a huge brain gut connection. So if you are eating horrible and you're not, what's the right word for it? You're not nourishing your gut properly. It affects your brain. Mm-hmm. So, and that's all I see is people that are really depressed and unhealthy. It's their food, it's mm-hmm. their habits. And so it is important to create healthy habits in your life. Even if you're just start with one at a time, you know, what yeah. does it take like 28 days to create a habit? Yeah. So just do one thing for 28 days, whether it's 10 minute meditation in the morning, going for a 10 minute walk, even just sitting with yourself and your thoughts and jotting down ideas. Just one thing to start. And then you can add something else to it and continue on from there. Yeah, I remember that actually coming up with my therapist because I can be a bit of an extremist. So Mm -hmm. meaning like, oh, I'm going to do this 30-day challenge and I'm not only going to go to the gym for 30 days, but I'm also change my diet for 30 days and like change everything, right? For 30 days. And it's overwhelming. It was unrealistic to make that be a healthy choice for myself. So yeah, I remember her saying, you know, start with one thing. Yeah. One and do that for it's 30 It's not days. black and white, you know, that it's, it's not all or nothing. And yeah. I've struggled with that myself mm-hmm. thinking, you know, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to do it. And then two days later, I'm back to where I was. Before. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, usually it's tired. easy to just make one little steps at a time, you know, right. and it's okay if you are taking those steps and then you fall back. You know, that's okay. Every moment is an opportunity to pick yourself up and start again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like with me, I can't meditate. I've tried for years. So now what I do is I take 20 minutes and just sit with my thoughts and journal. Right. And I I get so much out of that. I've also had a, a tiny bit of insomnia lately. So I now take a pad of paper with me upstairs. I get my best ideas from like 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Don't ask me why. Oh, yeah. But that's what I do. And I, it, it's helping, right? Because when I had my breakdown, I couldn't find my voice. Couldn't find my voice. I couldn't find my footing. And you know, I'm a year into my recovery. And God, I, I feel so much better. Because now I can sit down and I can, like, I can't really verbalize what I'm thinking. But if I can get it down on paper, at least it's not in my head anymore. And right. I, you know, I think that's a really, you know, healthy way to, like, deal with the shit that goes on in our heads, right? Because sometimes we don't have somebody to talk to and they may not have those resources, but it takes 10 minutes to write stuff down. Because once it's on paper, you don't really have to think about it anymore because it's someplace else. Yeah. Well, you know, and that is a, actually a form of meditation in what you're doing. You know, just sitting with your thoughts and writing, that's your meditation. That is, that is so incredibly healthy and powerful that you yeah. do that because it really does make a difference. I mean, some days it's not really like creative writing. Some days it's just a bunch of words like fuck. And I'm like, okay, now I feel better. Okay, like, cause I can't really say what I want to say on the phone. So I'm just going to write this word down like 15 times. Okay, we're good. Yeah, well, it's, that makes sense. You know, getting that shit out. Yeah. When I do my meditations, I think breathing in this light or breathing in, and my favorite color is, obviously pink magenta. So it's a rose gold magenta e crystal light that I breathe in that is clearing up all the crap. And I actually mm-hmm. visualize it coming out as gray, squiggles, question marks, exclamation points. <laughs> you know, it's like getting all that out. So whether you're doing that or you're actually writing down, you know, five, a million yeah. times, <laughs> get out. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny you say that. I sometimes if I can't sleep at night because my brain is racing on like something stupid I said that day or like a meeting that's coming up in the week, I will visualize inhaling like all clean air and then Mm -hmm. blowing out all the bullshit. And like I try to like as I'm blowing out to like think of everything that's pissing me off and then promise that I won't think about it with the next breath. And I'll keep doing it until I'm like, okay, I'm like relaxed. I'm calm. I can try to get some sleep. Are you hyperventilated? One of the two. (laughs) <laughs> just <laughs> but yeah, you know, no, that's... you know 
<laughs> what else is going on, ladies? Is I'm the, we're, I mean, I don't know about you two, but I'm in perimenopause. So oh, yeah. 3 a.m. is my witching hour and I am up. And that's when, you know, I have, well, the night sweats and all that. But that's when I have my best ideas too. So oh, yeah. Man. Oh, I get that. And insomnia and waking up in the middle of the night. Oh, no. Something I guess I have to look forward to. <laughs> I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, well, I went directly into menopause, so I had a hysterectomy in 2000, mm. 2007, and oh. yeah. it was horrible. My wife was like, who the fuck are you? Because I was a little bitch, because okay? I didn't have any hormones. Really? I had everything removed, but I still have some like menopause issues, right? And I had opted out of hormones just because of all the risks. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to find some plant-based something or another to make this go away. So I do plant-based, but the other thing that we have going on here is that, you know, I live in the upper Northeast and it's Mm. cold outside. So, you know, the wife has like, the the wife has the house and feeling like we're still in South Florida. My bedroom is upstairs. I swear to God, it is so hot in that room. It is not even funny. So you will like Mm. either find me laying on the bathroom floor because it's tile, or I will slip on a pair of shoes and go stand outside for a couple of minutes. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> doing your own form of cold plunge. Hey, you know what? Because I'm not doing it in a pond. Nope. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> not going to happen. Just lay in the snow. We had snow. Naked snow angels. Oh, oh that's right. Fair enough. You know what? Mother okay. Nature is on crash. Okay. She doesn't know what season we're in. Hey, we just had fake spring for three days. Yeah. <laughs> How is the weather where you in in your area? Up in, in upstate New York, it's stupid today. Today the weather is it's fifty one and it's going to snow on Monday. Oh wow! Yeah, it's dumb. Wow, I have no idea what it's like outside. So I need like California to you know piss Mother Nature off again, so that like by the time she gets over here, she like I'm done. Listen, here's all the rest of the snow that I have. I'm just going to chill out here for about three days, drop like five feet of snow, and then I'm going to move on. I, I What I do is I miss that a little bit because winter is my downtime, right? It's my time to to recharge and kind of just cleanse my, my, my body and my brain. I didn't do that so much last year. This year I really am, and I'm really thinking about and being very intentional about taking care of myself. That's, the problem for me is That's I did not take care of myself. I'm a true empath, so... I took on everybody else's crap, but I didn't take my take care of me. So I, I'm a big proponent for self love, self care, and setting some serious fucking boundaries. Like if it smells like drama now, we have a big old black paint can of spray paint, and it was like, <laughs> "Listen, I can't see you now." Yes. Well, boundaries that is massive. That is hugely important. If you're not setting those boundaries, people will walk all over you, and I completely get that. Yeah, that is one issue I've struggled with as well. Is some boundaries and the confrontation. I I, I tend to just backpedal and I, okay, you know, I'm just going to go over here and you 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 be you. I'm just going to go over here. But it you know it's it's because I haven't set my boundaries. So what are some of the things you are doing to set your boundaries? Because I would like to some tips on that too. So one of the things I do is I think about you know what is the ask? Does it benefit me? Is it going to piss me off? Is it going to help them? If it comes to the point of where it's going to piss me off, I completely walk away. I will disengage 100% because knowing me, like the old me would be, okay, let me jump in here and try and fix this. The new me is like, I'm 60 fucking years old. I am not doing this anymore, right? I, You get to a point in your life where it's just not that important anymore. And it happens on all levels of every relationship. And I think the other thing that that helps is if you step away from the situation, right? Maybe put yourself in their shoes and try and figure out where they're coming from. If it's good intentioned, I can, I'll give it like five minutes of my time. But if it's like something that I don't need to be involved in, I steer completely away from it. The other thing that, that helped too is like, I used to, like, if I got pissed off about something, I would stew on it for two, three days. Now I give it 20 minutes, you know, and then move on to plan B. And that, that's been really helpful because I'm not sitting with it anymore. And I do a lot right. more writing now, a lot more writing than I've probably done in the last 20 years. You know, if you, you have to think about what is good for you, is, it, is this going to help you? Great. You know, join the drama. 
Is this going to piss you off? Maybe walk away. If you have like a middle ground though, like at least give it some attention. But if it's not, if it feels like it's going to drown you, walk away. Mm -hmm. Have you had to, Jirax, have you had to have conversations and like let somebody know like, hey, this is as far as I'm going to go with this and yeah. And it, a boundary. it's hard, right? Like, so before the mental breakdown, I would like stew on it and, you know, jump in and try and fix it. But since, you know, since I've been in therapy for a year now, I, and it's just happened a couple of weeks ago, they were trying to drag me in and I'm like, you know, I feel really bad for you, but I really need to step away from the situation. And they understood. Good for you. You know, wow, good for you. I, to me, that I'm going to call that growth. Yeah, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. since I've known you, oh my gosh, yeah, that's great. It, it's growth, and you know, it's being a little vulnerable too, right? Like, I, I'm a people pleaser, you know, I'm an empath, but I've worked so hard to get where I am now. Like, I don't want to go backwards. Right. And the way I look at it is, if you don't fucking like me now, I'm not going to care. 60, okay? Mm -hmm. 60. <laughs> I've worked really hard to get to this level. Like, I'm in the next level of the game. And so for, like, the next 10 years, we're going to stay at this level. And then by the time I get to 70, you know, who knows what happens. But I'm proud of where I'm at now and being super vulnerable and, you know, living my, my living, truly living my best life. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. When I think Love about that. boundaries, that was the first thing I was thinking of is, like, why is it so hard sometimes? And I think it is because you're being vulnerable. Like you're being honest with your emotions and how far you can or how deep you can get involved with it. So I think that's mm -hmm. huge that you're able to say, hey, I feel bad for you, but I can't help. I, I, right. You know, and, and I think, it, you know, for our, for our mental health, we need to do that. Right. Sometimes we just need to walk away. And as hard as mm -hmm. it is, I mean, yeah. you, you don't drop all communication, but you walk away from that situation, that conversation, because some conversations just don't need to be had. Yeah. Silence is golden sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Write that shit down. Okay. Like if you don't want to talk about it, <laughs> write it down. <laughs> Maybe don't send that email, but write it down. Right. Yeah. I that makes sense. Mind. Yeah. Absolutely. Where have you struggled with it? Do you think? Setting boundaries. How has it been for you? Sometimes, you know, mostly with my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, I am a people pleaser as well. So I want to make sure that everybody's happy all the time. I think that's where I've struggled with it. Wanting to say yes all the time to everyone. Yes, I can do that. Yes, I will be there. And then realizing that I'm not giving myself enough time to... Or I'm not giving myself enough all time, like I said. Yeah. But I, you know, I, then I feel stretched. And then I feel bad for having to cancel. Or I feel bad for having then to say no. And it just makes me feel bad all the, even all over the place. So there's been a couple times recently where I have said no and it was okay. And I thought to myself, well, that was a lot easier. <laughs> actually, just said no, I'm overstressed right now. I cannot come to this dinner. So, and that was okay. I mean, it, it's so yes, I just need to continually do that in my personal life mostly. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you, Heather, the more you do it, the easier it gets. It really, <laughs> the more you say no, the easier it gets. And just remember, no is a complete sentence, right? So like, you don't need to offer them any explanation. If you tell somebody no, you, the reason's within you. Like, And they may mm -hmm. press you for that, but, you know, if you're going to be like me, don't go into it. Be like, nope, I just can't do it. And I don't have to give you a reason, right? You don't pay my bills. You don't pay, you know, you don't feed me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I value my personal time a whole lot more now than I ever did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's something I think I struggle with. Like, I wouldn't say yes to everything, but I want to do everything for like my family and be there for everyone and my friends. And you kind of overextend and like... And then it becomes like the complete opposite where finally I'm overwhelmed and I just mm -hmm. can't do it. And so then I say no to everything. So it's like the two extremes of like... The two extremes, yeah. yeah. So I balance. You get resentment. Yes. 
resentment for the other person, you know, but communication is key. I mean, it's hard enough to communicate in person, let alone, you know, over social media, over email, over phone, you know, just all these different avenues. It's really hard to convey your message, even in face to face you know, without the other, with the other person understanding completely. And, you know, they're not right mind readers. So you've got to, right. you've got to communicate what you've yeah. got. And if it's no, I can't do that. Then, you, you know, you ladies are right. It's just, it's not, not mad. It just is. Yeah. 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 Any tricks, G-Rex, for learning a balance? Maybe I can take from your wisdom as well. <laughs> Okay, so for balance for me is making sure I take care of myself first, right? My self-love and my self-care are way more important to me than relationships or doing things. So when you feel like you're going to get overstretched, right? Think about how is this going to benefit me, right? Am I going to give something away for, for myself to go do this? Or am I going to, am I taking away from something else that really needs my attention? So think about like that self-love or that self-care part of it, right? Because part of that is what it's doing to your head, because we all have these freaking conversations in our head all the time. Like (laughs) if I do this and I do this, you know, like for me, sometimes I have to write down what those decisions are. Right. And then I walk away from it for about 20 minutes and I come back and I'm like, okay, I have this choice and this choice. And then I, I just see how it makes me feel. Right. Like if I say no to this, how's that going to make me feel? They say no to this. How's that going to make me feel? And I, the more I do that, the better I feel about saying no. Yeah. Because I, I'm a little selfish now. I didn't ever think that I would be, but I'm selfish when it comes to my time and taking care of me. I'm still an empath. I will be for the rest of my life, but Mm -hmm. I also want to be happy. And I, I spent a year in therapy going twice a week. So that I could find that happiness, right? And I, you know, there was that glimmer, that dirty night, dirty skills, and I talked about, you know, on Christmas Day, there was that glimmer that things were going to get better, and they have like a hundred thousand times better. Now we have a, a successful podcast. I'm working my dream job. I get to, you know, see. I get to talk to my best friend almost every single day. We may not record yeah. every day, but we get to laugh about stupid shit. We check in. We check mm-hmm. in. <laughs> My wife and I are in a really good spot. And yeah. I get to see what that glimmer was, right? And, yeah. you know, there is hope. And, you know, I'm a firm believer in therapy and you know, self-love, self-care, and setting those boundaries. And, you know, I wish that I'd f- figured that out 20 years ago. And things might have turned out a little bit different. But I went through all that shit and came out on the other side and I think I'm a better person because of it because Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit more I'm not harsh I'm just you know more assertive self-assertive right like but I still can't I still can't do I can't do conflict though conflict drives me Mm -hmm. crazy I have a weird question how did you both figure out how to take care of yourself you know like what what would make you happy like how did you figure it out was it just trial and error, trying new things? Like going to the gym, for example, was it just like, hey, let me try this and see if it works or... Yeah, well, that's actually a really good question because as D. Rex was saying, she's, therapy is what really helped her. And for me, talk therapy has not been extremely beneficial. It has been self-discovery. So for me, I started reading some self-help books when I was in my 20s and trying the little tips and tricks that were in those books. And then like it, it, you're exactly right. Like exercise, I started going to the gym and realizing how I felt after that. And then realizing, seeing the difference when I didn't go to the gym to where to the days I do go to the gym. So I think a lot of it is just trial and error. And for me, reading is huge. I like to read. And so that I just absorb the the knowledge from reading books and taking those tips and applying them to myself and seeing if they work. But I think over the past 10 years or so, I'm 47 now. So in the past, yeah, about 10 years, I have learned to let go a lot of some ink because what we tend to do is overthink. Mm -hmm. So I'll 
have a whole scenario going on in my head about a conversation. And in reality, that person probably wasn't even thinking of that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, okay, this person, you know, did I say this wrong? Did I not do this right? Did I sound stupid? Did, you know, and when it comes down to it, they're thinking about their own stuff. They're not worried about you. So that's kind of helped me a lot to to know that I'm okay. Because you know what? We all have our baggage. We all have our, you know, thoughts in our head. And we think what it's like, how many hundred thousand thoughts a day or something? You know, I'm not yeah. sure about that. But yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of shit that goes on up there. <laughs> Literally. So yeah, trial and error, going back to what makes you better. Mm-hmm. Trial and error. And for me, I have found that that exercise is my biggest therapy, my manifestation planner and meditation. Those are what keeps me grounded. Yeah. And so for me, it's writing. I've also been doing a little tapping therapy too. And on top of my in-person, well, it's not in-person, I do it over Zoom. But tapping helps. Getting out in nature, it's a little harder to do in the wintertime, but I will at least go outside for like, even if it's for a minute, just to take in that fresh air, right? The other thing is being a little bit more open about where I'm at and not holding that in because holding that stuff in is so detrimental to you. It's detrimental to your health. Not just your mental health, but your physical health, right? Like, my stomach has never felt better. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Like, I I found my voice, and it's funny. My wife's like, you know, once you found your voice, you just don't shut the fuck up anymore. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, fair enough. But I, I find that it's better that I talk about it, right? Let out those feelings and not let it sit around and manifest in my head and my stomach. And just being patient with myself. You know, I think that's really important is that we need to be very patient with ourselves. We're learning, right? We learn every single day and learning what in, you know, particular situations, like, do I write this shit down? Do I confront them? Like, if I have to confront somebody, I'm going to sit down and write about it first before I I verbally do it because I want to make sure that the right words come out and not the I'm 60 and I don't fucking care what you think because sometimes that is not the best approach. Not the anger, not the instant uh, emotional part of it. You know, yeah. Showing grace, giving grace is so important, not just to everyone else, but to yourself. I think, I don't know if I just, I have a a tattoo on my arm that says show grace. I love that. I like that. Yeah. My mom and I got the tattoos together. She has the same one. Mm -hmm. And that's, I was named after my great grandmother, Grace, my middle name, Heather Grace. And she was the epitome of showing grace. She was raising seven children in the depression era. And with little extra that she had, she would give to people food, shelter, clothing. So that was just part of who she was, just very kind. And it's funny, my mom and I will talk and she talks about how she's pretty cynical. She can be, she is, has no filter whatsoever. And there's so many times where she'll she'll just say something. I remember being a little kid and just being like, so embarrassed. Did you really just say that? And she still does. And she feels that I take after my great grandmother because I don't have like that (laughs) cynical side in me like she does. But I feel like we also ground each other, you know, when it comes down to it. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah I, I take it out. But, but yeah, but showing grace to yourself, you cannot, you cannot survive. You cannot help anybody else unless you show yourself grace. Just like the airplane, you know, when the oxygen mask comes down, you put it on first mm-hmm. before you can help anybody else. So yeah. 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 And um, it sounds like G-Rex, that's what you're doing. It is now. Mm-hmm. But prior to the breakdown... No, everybody else would get a face mask and then I'd be like, okay, I need a little pop of air. You sacrificed yourself. I sacrificed myself and I refuse to do that anymore. Life is way too important. It's full of so many cool things and so many cool Mm -hmm. experiences. And, you know, like I said, I'm living my best life right now. I'm really fortunate. I love that. I have two random questions. Oh, God. Rex, you kind of know what they are. I know I like to throw in like the... (laughs) inside the actor studio questions and it might be related to what we were just talking about but heather if you could go back to an earlier version of yourself mm-hmm. and give advice how old would you be what's how old's the younger version and what would you say oh gosh i would say yeah 
I would say there's a couple different stages in my life that I would do that. I would say that that six year six year old, seven year old girl that is just so insecure and so depressed all the time and fearful. I would look at her, I'd give her a big hug, and I would tell her that she is beautiful. She is going to grow up and be successful. To my teenage self, I would pretty much do the same thing, but I would probably kick my butt a little bit because <laughs> I was a terror. <laughs> I would tell myself to, you know, study a little harder in school and, you know, don't take such a hard path when you're an adult. You know, I think that I was extremely insecure back then too. So I would tell myself, you know, you're going to grow up and you're going to, you're going to see things differently and you're going to be successful. So stop worrying so much about where you're at this moment in time. You're not going to stay there. Yeah. You know, I love that. I know yeah. you've answered this before, Jurex, but did, has your answer changed at all? It, it, it has a little bit. So like I would go back to my 20s and mm-hmm. tell myself to take the path less traveled, right? Mm-hmm. And have be a little bit more wanderlust and Ooh. try different experiences. And then like in my 40s, I would have told myself to set up some serious boundaries, right? Because by that time, people were walking all the hell over me and I let them. So boundaries are, are a big thing, but the travel part too. Yeah. And then the second question I have is what change or maybe habit have you in, implemented in your life that has been the biggest reward? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think it, I go back to meditation. I really believe that meditation and it's always guided. I have this app, there's meditation and hypnosis. So it just puts suggestions into your subconscious mind. And I think that has been the best self-care act that I could do for myself because I am actually seeing the changes. Oh, good. I'm from manifesting what I want. I am seeing the changes. I'm seeing the growth. I mean, and I look back at when I was in, you know, my my late twenties and early thirties, and sitting in my office, the HR office, and just dreaming about having a business, dreaming about starting a skincare brand, and also thinking to myself, oh, I could never do that. But then here I am, yeah. you know. And I think that I started manifesting all that without even knowing it years ago. So when I found meditation, and I've been doing it now for you know several years. Really see the changes every single year, you know, and I've noticed that I am not as I don't get as much depressed as I used to. Of course, that's exercise as well. But when you manifest, when you meditate to the life that you want and you start seeing those changes, that's the hugest reward for me. I love that. What about you, GRX? Writing. I think mm-hmm. that just starting, you know, putting pen to the paper or even just writing on a laptop, right? I'm able to get a lot of stuff out. Things like I've wanted to tell people for years, but you know what? It doesn't deserve the time for me to actually have that conversation with them. I just rather get it on paper so it's out of my head. That's been life changing for me because I'm in the process of, you know, I'm writing a book about my journey, right? I got the first part of the book written, the last part of the book written. It's that middle section because that's the, that was the hard time, right? But man, it's been so therapeutic. It really has. Wow. I, I wonder it. if you could make a, a, some comedy out of some of your writings too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Like if you oh, don't like the, if could. you don't like the word fuck, don't read the book. Yeah. Okay? I'm just <laughs> gonna say one chapter is just called fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably gonna be the middle part. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's fitting. <laughs> So funny. Well, I love yeah. this. I love getting to hear your story and you're inspiring me to put myself first. I know it makes me happy and not be mm-hmm. so scared to do a passion project. And yeah, well, you should. Right. And yeah. you know, there's a fear of the imposter. You know, if you're like, yeah. I, I, at first I thought to myself, like, who am I? I didn't study cosmetic yes. chemistry in, in school. You know, I mean, I, I did afterwards, but you know, who am I? I don't have a degree in chemistry, but it's totally different and it's totally okay. There's a lot of formulators out there that don't have that, you know, extensive background. But what I do have is that drive. And I do 
it's a constant learning. I'm always taking courses. I'm always, I'm part of a, what's called chemist corner. Mm-hmm. So any course that they come out with, it's, I'm on it. I'm like, I, I need to learn more. <laughs> it took me a while to, to think, am I, you know, am I good enough for this? Yeah. You know? Hey, and yes, I absolutely am. I'm doing it. I have a lab. I'm doing it. I, I'm creating products. Every single product that I have, I've, cre- I've formulated myself. That yes. is so cool. That, damn good. That is, yeah, a damn good product. But damn I, I do have to say, Dirty Skills, is that I am really proud of you too. Because, you Thanks. know, like over the last year, you become, you know, you did let your, you know, your shade come down and you did expose yourself yes. to the world. And it's true. I couldn't do this podcast without you. I really couldn't. I but so. we used to laugh about some of the worst things ever. But we are also helping a ton of people, right? And they get right. to learn by everybody's journeys. And I've learned by from yours. And Heather, yeah. thank you for sharing yours. But yeah. I, you, your growth in the last year has been immense. And so I'm super, think, super proud of you. Well, thank you. It's nice. I appreciate that. Look at me. Now you're going to go cry. <laughs> That's right. So, he- I love it. Heather, where can our listeners go find your products? Where can they learn more about you? They can learn more about me through heathergraceskincare.com. That is my website. And then also on Instagram, it's Heather Grace Skincare. Hey, yeah. and can you let us know what's the app you're using for your okay, meditation? Okay, I literally, that was my last question. <laughs> for, the, for my meditation? Yeah. Yeah. It's called HypnoCloud. HypnoCloud. I'm writing it down. Yeah. HypnoCloud. Let me look it up. Yeah. So it's called, it's H-Y-P-N-O-C-L-O-U-D. All one word. HypnoCloud. And it's pretty incredible. I got to say the woman's voice on it is very soothing too. So I really do go deep into myself and I love it. There's so many different genres on there to, from, you know, less alcohol, eating better, exercise, manifesting well. In you know, manifesting your intuition, even dream. I'm so, cool. I'm so gonna get that app. So gonna get yeah. that app. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Gosh. Thank well, you, I, you know, I could definitely go on all day. I have uh, many stories <laughs> to share. So maybe, maybe another time we can. Yeah, can we have you sure. back? I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Thank you so much. This has been awesome and inspiring, and I appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing your side of in care with us okay hi all thank you so much for listening to this episode i'm g-rex and i'm dirty skittles don't forget to subscribe rate and review this podcast we'd love to listen to your feedback we can't do this without you guys it's okay to be not okay just make sure you're talking to someone <laughs>